Ben from the Parker Brothers and welcome back to another fishing video. Today you join me down the famous B1. I'm at Linear Fisheries again. Linear Fisheries again with my good friend Nick and T. Now Nick's been in here last night. Unfortunately for the last 24 hours it hasn't been, it's been fishing quite hard and he hasn't managed anything but he did lose one on his left hand rod about an hour prior to me turning up. T in typical T fashion, Mr. 30 himself is nicked one. He's had a 17 pounder this morning around 10 o'clock and that's the first fish we've had in the disabled pegs. Yep, we're in the disabled pegs again. It's only going to be a quick video guys this one. It's going to be a quick 24 hour session where I'm going to bring you on my journey, myself and T, and hopefully bring you a real interesting video. Um, I'm going to touch on a few things while I'm here. Um, again, I'll, I'll touch on that later on the video. I'm going to do some foodie bits this evening, although I won't be cooking because I had to go to Marks and Spencers on the way here, which I wasn't too happy about because I had to remortgage my house to them buy my dinner, which cost me 13 quid, which I wasn't too happy about, to be brutally honest with you. So I've got that, so I've got a nice sandwich and a few other little bits tonight that I'm going to have, and again, I'll show you later on. But like I said, I'm going to bring you on the journey. And just before I start this video, guys, my name's Ben. We upload every Sunday at 7.30 to the Parker Brothers YouTube channel. We've got a live premiere. Everybody joins in. It's all good fun. Like my people all fishermen a bit of banter in there as well and it's good fun so if you haven't before guys join in join in that uh, come in on a sunday 7 30 and join in the chat so before we start this video guys give us a thumbs up make sure you comment down below smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos going forward and hopefully myself and t can bring you an absolute banger i'll see you in a bit well i think it'd be rude not to keep you in the loop guys really so here i am um nick's just here hey, here guys. he is um, you've got T over here in his normal spot, he's fishing out in front and again I'm sure I'll touch base on that later on and we'll go over there and talk to T. But here I am, I'm going to sleep under the stars tonight, like I said it's only a quick one. And um, rods are out and what I've done is there's actually a reed bed and it's a thick reed bed running about 15, between 14 and 15 wraps out there, maybe just over 15. What I've done is I've kept, kept going, I've done the clip a little bit closer and a little bit closer in so I'm just fishing just off the back of it and I've got three rods off the back of this reed bed and in the distance you can see a bush I'm literally fishing where my finger is three rods are on my finger so there it is that's what I'm doing I've put sort of half a bucket of bait out big bedder sort of parker baits OG fish OG fruit and nut bit of particle in there a bit of hemp basic stuff for linear three rods on a spot a zig on my right hand rod which is running 10 foot so i've got the best of both worlds so i'm fishing up in the water and i can also what i always do is my zigs very quickly i'm going to touch on that my right hand right hand rod like i said is on a zig i always go to my limit with a zig because what you can do is then if you want to te test the depths of the water you can take feet off so you mean you can reel your rod in take off take off a foot and then fish nine foot try nine foot eight foot seven foot etc you can't add line on is what i'm getting at so i always rather go higher and bring the zigs down to i find them and work off the bat like that and that's just how i fish zigs and i normally fish straight up zigs i don't fish a liners or anything i make the zigs and i've touched on this on previous fishing vlogs up linear guys and if you haven't watched that head over to the channel if you want to learn a little bit more about zigs and zig fishing check that out for yourself but again the, the wind mate look at this wind nick commented on it t's commented on it the wind is just trickling trickling in the bay it's coming down it was sort of going slightly more across earlier but sort of coming towards us hence why i'm only fishing a little bit far far out i don't think you need to fish right in the middle in this particular peck because the fish do get in and you always seem to see fish on this left hand margin there's always fish showing in the margin literally where that grebe is right now so yeah that's the update for now i don't even know what the time is but i'll touch base with you later on right then guys so it's time for dinner and I have got, I went, as I said, I went to Marks and Spencer's earlier on the service station to grab some ham and egg sandwiches. Look at them. Absolutely lovely. And some sweet chilli crisps, I think they are. Sweet chilli crisps. And I've got a few other little delights as well. The rice cakes with um, like chocolate over them and stuff. So they're really nice. So that's what we're going to have, guys. I know it's nothing special. And I haven't done some proper cookie bits in a long time, but yeah, there it is. Time to eat my food um, before it gets too late, so it's not sitting on my stomach all night. And uh, just watch the water. Nothing to report in regards to fish, really. Nothing really showing. I've been playing about my zig on the right hand rod, playing about the areas, depths, etc. But nothing's sort of come of it yet. I mean, I've been here sort of since 12, it's now five, so five hours. Probably got the rods out 
hour and a half on me being here, so it's probably been about you know three and a half hours each, something like that. So there it is, that's the update for now. I'll catch you in a minute, mate. So very quickly, what are you doing there with that mesh and how you're making your bags and stuff, what you're putting in them? Talk to me, bud. Right, so I just have a, two boilies in a mesh bag, crumbled up. I usually put them with all my wafter rigs. And yeah. I'm happy when I can present on the bottom nicely. Yeah, okay. So two little crush, just a, just a nice little suck straight in the mouth. And, and that's how you normally do it, mate, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, I've, to be honest, I've nicked that because I've been doing it myself recently. I think it's like you just said, that one suck, you've got that little intimate little little package parcel. Again, we're alongside our OG fish wafters or the OG fruit and nut wafters. They're, they're beautiful. They're little perfect little parcels. And um, it just sits with that and complements it perfectly. Yeah, nice one, mate. One thing I think as well, Go on. though, when it sucks in, obviously you've got all these bits in between. At least then when it sucks up crumb little particles, it doesn't notice this as much because it's a bit much, isn't it? Really? No, no, I agree. I agree. Hurry, so it just helps it a little bit more. So it sort of hides it, is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. no, that's, yeah, no, no, granted. Yeah, I've never really looked at it like that, but how you say that, yeah, because there is a lot going on. When you've got shrink tube on, etc. yeah, it's a lot going on, isn't it? No, totally. Now, brilliant. Cheers, mate. So without disturbing tea, guys, very, very quickly, as you can see here, this is how tea fishes. Um, like you said, it's got a lot of plastic going on. Sort of Ronnie set up. Um, but I love how he doesn't use boom material. Uh, this is one for me. I'm, I'm sort of fixated on boom material, and I don't think you need it. He uses this, this, this particular braid. It's got that same sort of suppleness, but boomy-ish material. It's nice because it kicks out. But very quickly, there it is. OG fruit and nut wafter. And then you've got an OG fish wafter there on the other one and that's done in bites left right and centre up here And if you haven't seen the previous video guys where I've been up and doing longer sessions with tea the bloke's an absolute animal So go and check that out and see it for yourselves. So there it is. That's his presentation That's his rigs and that is how he fishes his PVA bags right, So I've managed to nick tea for a quick quick few seconds and he and, he, and he's gonna go over very quickly over his baiting approach So what you got in there then mate talk me through what you've got in that pot You want to grab a handful out? And well, it's quite simple really. It's just the OG fish yep. and the OG fruit and nut. Yeah. And obviously some sweet corn in there. And I do flick in a couple of like white little boilies just to put them off, I'm not picking just the primarily the OG fish or the OG fruit and nut. So if I do fish a pop up on the top, yep. they feel a bit more confident in yep, it. Yeah, sure. And now I love that guys, and I don't know if you got that. That that is a big one for me and something me and T, I mean we do it for years, haven't we, really? Yeah. We go into a tackle shop, we buy the cheapest bites baits we can. It doesn't matter about the nutritional value because all you're trying to imitate there is a pop-up. So they come down when they're actively feeding on the bottom like T just said not the nail on the head they're picking these up as well and it well I think it slips him up mate doesn't it yeah you're it not really wrong. does you're not wrong so a bit of corn in there as well um, like I said 14 mils a day mate you, yeah you I always go for the 14, 14 mils is there any reason for that or not no? I just like a more of a bit of a spread rather than 18 mils obviously if I'm getting pestered by nuisance fish or I'm going somewhere where I know it's going to be quite bad I'll step it up to the 18s but if I can right, sure. always always a 14 mil yeah, I love that. I love it. So there it is. That is a bit more of an insight in T's lovely mix there. And that's done him justice up here, left, right and centre. Thanks very much, mate. Appreciate that. You're welcome, mate. Cheers. Mm -hmm. I caught him. <laughs> what? So, no foam on that, mate. Any reason for that? No, I never use foam. I no. use it. I want. I don't want my bait to lift off away from that little bag. I want that little bag to disguise my hook. Obviously, a little swivel and stuff, just to disguise it all, really. As long as I know I've casted it in there nicely, I think yeah. to me that's the main thing, as long as I can get a nice smooth cast down to the bed. Hit that clip, get the presentation. Now that's interesting guys, because you know I absolutely love foam and I will not cast without it. But T again, he, there's been sessions where he's caught quadruple what I've caught and there's been sessions that I've done the same back to him. So it just goes to show both ends of the spectrum can catch fish. And ah, it's funny that, that really is mate, because I, I, to be honest with you, I thought you put foam on. Yeah, I put <laughs> foam on obviously when I'm fishing the weedy lake, but yeah, I'll yeah. put a, a, just a, like a pop-up or something out yeah. in the foam. I never use a bag then for it. Sure, because like burners like the other week you were, weren't you? Yeah, because yeah. it's really weedy there, so yeah. you've got to just to make sure it's sure. presented. Yeah, yeah. But with here, I know, I know the bottom's lovely out there. So it really smooth. is, yeah. It's on the money first time, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I get that, mate, totally. Right, I'll let you get on, mate. Sorry for interrupting. I'll let the man do his work. Good. Happy with that then mate or? Yeah, yeah, it did, did do a bit of a spirally thing but I'm pretty happy with it. Sweet. 
Now what are you doing there, mate? Just sinking the line down, straighten it all up before I put it on the pod. Obviously, I don't want a big bow in the line. Happy days. Especially where the wind's pushing it around at the moment. It does pull it a little bit, doesn't it, when you yeah, cast it, don't you? Yeah, mate. Even if you hit clip and put your tip forward, it still pulls it a little bit. Um, a lot of people, guys, and I've seen it so many times on the bank, get their rod cast out, put it straight down, and that's it. And you think, that line is going like that, so the actual indication you're going to get is going to be not so great but if you can get that line lay 100% pull up to your lead the second a fish picks it up and you've got your line tight you know you're going to get an indication straight away and hopefully you're into a fish that's rod number two out. T's first rod out look at that lovely I love his pod first rod out um, not 100% on the money it's about three foot off but again I love this about T so it's not we're gonna redo that one later on but you can stay out there for now on that spot because that's still good on money because a couple of his spawns I think flew off to that side so he knows that he's got bait over it he's presentated he's hit clip nice and he's got that rod out but the other comment he made to me is I need to get these two absolutely perfect because I know the other rods he's gonna fish probably what a foot a foot apart from each other so there it is and I know he's fishing out towards there how many wraps you're fishing mate uh... Only, I think it's just under 15, like two foot under 15. Just, uh, just under 15 wraps out towards this bit here, guys. Okay, the tree here, sort of just below here. Happy. Last one out on the money, mate. Yep. Happy days. <laughs> Happy days, mate. There you go. Right, I'm going to leave T do it. So I've already started getting my rods in for a rechuck, probably now till I go. Um, honestly, I'm fishing plastics, to be honest with you. I'm fishing um, oh, the flat spot and the fruit and nut bait spray on two different colours. They've been soaking in there for weeks, months, months and months and months. So they absolutely stink. So that's my approach tonight because I'm sick of crayfish and I don't need that tonight. I've got one night to make it happen so I can't afford to have it take something off and then me not be live out there. So that's the plan of action. Right hand rod, I'm going to keep on a zig I think. I'm going to keep that one left hand rod I've just done. Went out on the money. Just to the just to the left now. I need to get one a foot to the right of that. It might take me a few chucks but that's the plan of action now. I'm not going to record that guys. Um, but yeah, I'll touch base with you in a little bit. Buzzing mate, rods are out. Um, all three of them now on the money, really happy. And I said, I touch best you now. Time to eat some rice cakes and um, watch the water. It is, it is six o'clock now, six o'clock, and we got till 12 o'clock tomorrow. So, <laughs> this man is an animal, an absolute animal. So, what rod then, mate? Left one, mate. And how long's that been out? Oh, it's wiping your lines, mate. Oh, no. Taking out my lines. <laughs> I have to redo them. It's all right. Nah, it's all right. It's all right. I'll read them in. I'll come back to you. Well, I don't know. What, I don't know what made me do it, but I put that one on the back lead, and that one hasn't been touched. Typical, isn't it? But I've brought them two rods in. Without standing on that, I'm head round a tee now, and hopefully we can uh, get this one in. You want to put your waders on? I think it's probably a good idea, isn't it? It's not fighting hard, no? No. Oh, it looks quite big out there, actually, doesn't it? Right, let me um, get in the hole. Keep it coming in. Keep it coming in, bruv. No, it don't look massive. I mean, I can't really see it, mate, from this angle. Can you? Well, wow, it's a good sign, at least they're feeding out there, it's absolutely brilliant. Weren't expecting that, we were just sat there watching the water, having a drink, and just, yeah, rod absolutely sp sped off and kited left, as you saw, massively. So I'll come back to you when it's a little bit closer. This man is on fire. <laughs> giving them a right merry dance this fish it really really has yeah, it, does it doesn't want to come in does it at all 
He reckons definitely a 20, definitely a 20 he's going to me. <laughs> Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Come on. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Yes. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Right, I'm going to turn the camera off, guys, before I drop it in. But then I have to stuff it. I'll quickly show you. Yeah. <laughs> it's a nice one, mate. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a nice. What a first fish, T. Look at this, mate. Look at this thing. Wow. Lovely. A few scales up the back there. But it's going to be interesting to see what it weighs. Going to weigh it, not going to video that, guys. Then we'll get it up and show you. It's a banger, mate. <laughs> he gets in, T. So talk to me, mate. OG oh, Fruit and Nut Wafter's doing it again. But what, how, how big? As soon as I get into it, mate, bang. It went all the way to the left. <laughs> Probably like 20, 30 wraps up the margin. <laughs> oh mate, it wiped all of our rods out. It really did, didn't it? <laughs> but we got it. <laughs> we got it. So it was 36 with the sling. So it's four and a half for the sling, so 31 and a half. 31 and a half pound, 30, second fish of the trip. T does it again. <laughs> you absolute animal, mate. Right, we'll show you the other side quickly, then we'll get it back. Because it is a big fish, guys. <laughs> so there it is, there's the other side guys, just as beautiful. So it's, it's so little scales, but it's a little bit darker tea, isn't it? Yeah, it's normal. got a lovely colour to it, mate, you're not wrong. Lovely it's... little head, oh mate, what a fish. <laughs> Get in there, my <laughs> son. Right, well, I don't know if you can see that, guys, but they're actually eating. The grebes are eating a crayfish. That's madness. Look at it. There it is. Blooming crayfish. This goes to show many of them. Many of them things are in it. How cool's that? Eat as many as you like, mate. <laughs> right, guys. Well, it's actually gone ten o'clock now, believe it or not, and um, still light out there ish although this brightens it right up the camera but I am getting some sleep now because I'm absolutely knackered it's been a long day I've done some lots of driving I was actually fishing a lake earlier a sitch um, at RH Fisheries from a good mate Kev prior to that I was at Drayton Reservoir as well so it's been a busy busy week for me busy week for me and um, obviously finishing off here at B1 so hopefully I can nick one tonight that would be absolutely amazing, but um, there's definitely fish out there. And the only thing update I have got for you is my left hand rod. I've punched the zig out there. It's about 11 foot because I've seen fish on the top topping out there. So they are right up in the top of the water. So that's, that's the reasoning behind that. So there it is. I'll touch base with you, hopefully, very soon. He's only gone and done it. <laughs> All night. <laughs> It's been hard going if I'm honest with you, it really has. And seeing them on my spot consistently over and over and over again is the most frustrating thing in the world. I don't think this one's massive, guys, but to be honest with you, I don't care. I just want to get it in, get some video, and uh, well, like I said, hopefully just get the thing on the bank. But it's been hard going. What I'll do is I'll touch base, guys, when I've got it in, hopefully, and I'll uh, see you in a second. All right, let's get this camera down. <laughs> <laughs> you having a laugh, look at this mate, absolute banger, T reckons 21 and a half, we're about to weigh it now, I'm going to get up for it in a second, but look at that mate, absolutely beautiful. She is a gem, isn't she? That is a gem, isn't it? <laughs> look at it. Apple slice scales, look at it, wow. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> look at that, for an absolute banger. And he was right again. 21 and a half pounds, mate. Yep, 21 and a half on the bees, mate. 21 and a half pounds. Last minute knock-ins. I mean, how long we got left? <sighs> half hour, mate. Half hour, hour. I don't know, something like that. I'm over the moon. And um, the news I'm about to tell you in a second about a gentleman that come over yesterday who couldn't find a spot in the corner. 
I'm going to tell you that after I get to let this fish go. I'm absolutely buzzing, guys. The Parker baits. This was, to be honest with you, this was on plastics, and this was they were soaked in the flat spot. So I've soaked my plastic in the flat spot to avoid to avoid them crayfish. Um, although they might still knock it, but that's been out all night. That rod, and then it's peeled off this morning. So I was fishing. I just don't know what I was doing wrong last night. There was fish all over me. But again, like I said, I'll touch on that in a little bit. But what an absolute banger! I'm going to quickly show you the other side, guys. It's lost the scale this side, but again, just as beautiful. It's a double lint. You don't see them like this in here, T, do you, really? Nah, that's it, mate. Stocking is really starting to come, come up else as it? well, isn't it? Yeah. Getting loads of nice scaly ones in here. Look at that. What? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely oh. buzzing, mate. So there it is. There's the other side. Let's get this one back. Thank you very much. It's the linear, and thank you very much, the Parker Bates. <laughs> As if last minute knockings. Doing it again. I've been getting real lucky in my last minute knockings. The last last minute knockings. The last sort of few sessions. I'm buzzing with that. Twenty one and eight half pound. Um, yeah, over the moon. Real nice looking one as well. Real nice looking one for a quick sort of 24 hour session. I can't grumble with that. Um, but yeah, so what happened? So last night, so between the hours of two, two o'clock, we always set an alarm, got up at two, topped up a few spawns. Prior to that, didn't see anything over the spot. Within 15 minutes, I am seeing these fish relentlessly over the spot, over the spot, over the spot, over the spot, again and again and again and again and again. Two and a half hours, three hours, and then you hear another splosh, but I'm one of these people that lays in bed, I hear a splosh, and I've got to look, I've got to see where it was from, and I'm like, oh, it's the same flipping spot again. It just wasn't happening, it wasn't happening, I don't know what I was doing wrong, I had a zig on the spot as well, um, just in case there were fish, because I brought my left hand rod in, um, put it straight out on the spot uh, just to the left of, of, of my baited spot again where I've been putting the bait in and where I spawn because I put a few pellets in and they've gone a bit mushy so it kind of makes like a bit of a cloud to a degree so I put that out nothing and I just don't know honestly it was the most one of the most frustrating night sessions I've had in a long time knowing that they're on you and not and not and it not happening was Oh, it was a real kick of the teeth but anyway um i'm sat here this morning and um well basically yesterday i, did, I didn't say in the video but a bloke come up he was fishing in the peg that rob was fishing in and he come up and he said to us yesterday i think he grabbed tea and that and he sort of said i come up and that he said oh i'm just, just struggling just really really struggling to find the spot um i can't find every time i cast out i get weed I said, are you fishing on the bar out there on that the sort of sunken island? So I went down there, reeled my rods in, went down, spayed with him for about 20, 25 minutes. We had a good chat and I was explaining to him, you need to get it on there. And I found, I found the spot for him and um, we both discussed together. Ben, his name was, and um, we both discussed together. Yeah, yeah, I found that. I goes, mate, that is, that is the money. So this was his left hand rod. It was money. And it was where Rob was fishing, because I know Rob will be watching this. It was where you were fishing, mate. Um, just in that first bowl on the top of that island, that sunken island. There's like a bowl, and then behind that, there's another bowl over to the right. Anyway, I found this found this hole, and I've given to him. He's, he's grabbed the rod. He's like, mate, thanks so much. You know, I, I was really struggling, and you know, I've know, found a spot now. I'm out, and I can fish confident through the night. I said, mate, no problem at all. Um, any time, um, no, no problem whatsoever. So he was really, really grateful to bloke. Anyway, I've, I've, I've then come back, left him to it. He's come back this morning, and he said, "Mate, you won't believe it. I've just come over to shake your hand." <laughs> He's had a 45-12 off the spot. <laughs> I can't get over that, Ben, mate. Fair, fair play. And what I'm going to do is, guys, he's going to send me this. Um, obviously, I'm here now, and obviously, I don't know. So, yeah, I'm going to put it up on the screen now, at least some pictures and some video of this thing, if if, if, if I can. Um, but to you to get a gauge of a banger as well. Absolutely beautiful fish. What a fish, you know, what a fish. 45-12. That's got to be up there with one of the second biggest fish in here, because we've got the beast of braised nose. But I don't normally know fish to go that. That's after spawn. 
as well. It might be a male, but that's after spawn. So it's like, mmm, that could have been 47, 48 a month ago, two months ago, pre-spawn, maybe, I don't know. But anyway, Ben, um, massive shout out to you, mate. Good angling, um, absolutely pulled it out of the bag with a new PB of 45.12, a lovely mirror, mate. So I was basically, and then with that, as this Ben's standing there, that's when my rods went, and I said to him, I said to him, mate, you know what, I'm going, I was going to him, you know, I don't care now, I'll go, I'll go away with a blank. I said, now you've told me that, that's made my day, because I get off on other people catching as well, that's what fishing's all about. As I've said that, middle rods, Bobbin's dropped on the, no, sorry, Bobbin's pulled up, hit the blank, and then just dropped on the ground, so I thought, I'm hitting that, hitting that, played this fish, and then obviously that's when it unfolded, and I caught that one a second ago. So that was my night, guys, that was my morning, but what news, what news that is, and... Yeah, I'm one happy man. I really, really am seeing that. And Ben, one more time, mate. Fair play to you. And well done on the new PB. Absolutely ripped up trees, mate. <laughs> so there it is. I'm going to leave it now. We're leaving about 10-ish. It's half past nine now. Um, I'll probably pack up before that, to be honest. I've, I've just moved a zig on a, on a show and fish. I just put it, I put, literally put the lead on its head to my right. I've got the rod on the, on the side now with a stone on it. Obviously drag flick so it can free run. But yeah, I'm going to slowly start packing down. Luckily, I don't need to pack down much like T over there because he's got to put all down his bivvy. I've just got to put down my bed chair. A few little bits being that was only a quick one. Um, but yeah, hopefully you've liked this video so far, guys. And like I said, stay tuned because I'll touch base just before I leave. Real last knock-ins now. Last bit. Rod's down there, look. Keep seeing fish. Sort of go over my zig over there. But yeah, what a beautiful place. And... Uh, Hopefully I'll definitely be back soon. Up the linear. Right then guys, that is me done. Unfortunately, I didn't catch any more, but um, it's been a great session here at the linear fisheries complex. And um, yet again, B1 pulling it out of the bag, especially for T this session. And also Ben, just down the peg from T. So just before I go guys, um, if you haven't already, make sure you go over to the Parker Baits Instagram and Facebook and smash that like button or follow button um, on Instagram and Facebook. Also, if you haven't seen or heard about the Parker Baits Open Day, which is on the 13th of August, make sure you go and check that out as well. Um, big things to come um, on the Parker Baits Open Day. We're based in Southampton, but again, it's all on our website. It's totally exactly what's going to be happening on the day. So if you haven't done that, go over, get yourself a ticket and uh, come down it'd be lovely to meet some new people and obviously for you guys to enjoy the day as well but that is it that's me done and time for that dreaded drive home so hopefully you've liked this week's video guys this sunday upload at 7 30 like i said every week we upload at 7 30 at the parker brothers youtube channel and um, like i said hopefully it was a banger if you have liked this video guys give us a thumbs up make sure you comment down below smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos going forward and i'll see you same time next sunday 7 30 all the best peace out